Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 12.4. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League of Legends is to be able to adapt to the meta, and that's why we're here for you. If you want to know what's going to be OP before the patch hits, you'll be ready to hit the ground running without having to test and see if one buff or nerf really made that much of a difference. And if you don't know how to play any of these OP picks or you're just a little bit rusty, this will give you a few days to brush up on them and some normals are on a smurf. Before we get started, I just want to say that this list is not in any particular order. It's just going to be a list of champs that we think are going to be the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. We'll be starting things out in the top lane with Riven. As we predicted, last patch's bruiser item changes were a massive plus for Riven, with her easily becoming one of the best picks in the game. And when you consider how high her skill floor is, her super high stats are even more impressive. A really good Riven player is able to win most matchups and go even in a few hard counter lanes. Unlike other bruisers who usually either specialize in splitting or team fighting, Riven is S tier in both, so there's always some way to use a lead, whether your team is good or not. Whether you're trying to learn to abuse the broken champions on this list or how to really deal with them when you end up on the wrong side of the matchup, if you really want to speed up that process, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like CoreJJ, Aphromoo, and XSmithy to really help you understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized experience, which I definitely recommend, you should check out our coaches that are available 24-7 ready to help you guys become the best. Our coaches are top tier players that have spent years climbing that solo queue ladder and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. Now let's get back on topic, shall we? The next pick for our list is Rumble in the mid lane. Riot sort of has this tendency to buff a champion because they're not doing so well in their main role, even if they're completely dominating in a less popular role. It happened with Ziggs last season as well as Vagar and Brand this season. All three champions are supposed to be played in the mid lane according to Riot, but the buffs that they made to them were just making them more oppressive bot laners than they already were. In Rumble's case, they're trying to push him as a top laner by boosting his armor, since most of his hard top lane matchups are against bruisers that deal physical damage, but he loses to those matchups so hard that this isn't going to do much to remedy that. In the mid lane, Rumble is already a super dominant pick, especially against 80 assassins. He completely dumpsters both mages and assassins alike, and he can use his ability to shove in waves to roam and affect the map. More armor just means beating melee assassins even harder in whatever trades that they try to take, and helps mitigate some of that poke that you may take from ranged champions even if by just a bit. Despite being at the very top of the performance charts for several patches in a row, Kha'Zix is once again being completely ignored by Riot. In fact, one of his tough matchups, Nunu, is being nerfed this patch. The nerf is pretty small, to the point that in most cases it won't affect Nunu at all. But this is such a close matchup that it may actually make a difference, pushing Kha'Zix just a hair above him in a head-to-head. -head. Anyway, specific matchups aside, Kha'Zix does the job way too consistently. The assassins are supposed to be high-risk, high-reward picks that either snowball hard and carry hard, or completely flop later. At the moment, he just seems to do well every game. Next up, we have Sona. While she may not be able to 1v9 carry like most of the other champions that made this list, Sona's team fighting scaling is just so insanely strong that we can't not include her. Once you reach the late game and have a ton of ability haste, you're allowed to cycle through your spells super quickly and constantly buff your team's damage while nullifying a lot of the enemy teams. To round out her kit, her ultimate gives you a little bit of self-peel, helping to make up for the lack of mobility, and when you don't need it for your own safety, it's a great tool to layer CC with your allies engage. Vagar may be on this list of champion nerfs this patch, but don't be fooled. These placebo changes aren't going to really change how strong he is as a bot laner. He's still going to be able to bully weaker lanes while neutralizing and outscaling the stronger ones. His E cooldown nerf may hurt his team fighting a little bit if they increase it at all ranks, but since it's just the same once you max it, you won't really notice a thing. Another champion kind of getting a random placebo nerf is Blitzcrank. He's losing a tiny 1 HP per 5 seconds, which does absolutely nothing to change the fact that he can win lane and even entire games with just a single hook. Blitzcrank's strength comes from the meta that we're in right now. Almost all supports being played are squishy enchanters, mages, or senna, which are all super free kills if you reel them in. For Blitz to be pushed out of the meta, Riot has to either completely gut him, or just wait until the meta goes back into being tanky support champions that you do not want to pull. Lightning to Blitzwing Hook to turn an otherwise lost game is one of the best feelings in League. There just isn't much else that feels that satisfying. That brings us to today's question of the day. What is the most satisfying ability or combo to land? Let us know your answers down in the comments below. Now without further ado, let's get back on topic. Honestly, it's undetermined whether or not roaming supports being played top lane is going to continue being a thing after these changes. But what I am sure of is that Janna will still be an insanely strong champion. She provides too much of a safety net and teamfights to not be considered broken. She has not one, but two abilities that can stop the engage of champions like Zac or Lee Sin. And even if you aren't playing her as a top laner, support Janna is still more than capable of roaming and impacting the rest of the map. 
The buffs that Lowey's getting won't necessarily be making her a broken pick that you can just blind pick every single game. She's still going to be struggling with agile fighters like Riven or Fiora that can easily dodge her E and then go for an all-in. But she's definitely the one that shines as a counter pick to tanks. In fact, I'd go as far to say that it's borderline impossible to lose lane to a tank as a Lowey. They just lack the damage at all stages of the game to do anything to you. And if there's ever a situation where both the enemy top laner and the jungler lock in low damage tanky champions, Alawi is practically a guaranteed win. You'll be able to 1v2 them anytime after level 6 and just play to split to win the game. The next entry to the list is Diana. She might be one jungler that I would say might be better than Kha'Zix. Super strong at both power farming and dueling, so no other jungler can go ahead and punish you early. Pre-6 ganks are okay, and once you have the ultimate, the success rate goes up. Once you reach the mid and late game stages, she's only getting deadlier, with Diana being easily able to one-shot squishy targets with her full combo, with no real weak point in the game or any particularly bad matchups, she's just sort of an uncounterable monster at the moment. Now we'll be talking a little bit about Soraka. Most people tend to think of Soraka as a scaling teamfight oriented pick, where she just uses her super powerful heals to keep allies alive throughout otherwise deadly amounts of damage. While she is definitely OP at that point of the game, if you're playing her super passively while you wait to reach that point, you're doing it wrong. When played correctly, you should be able to provide a ton of pressure with her during the laning phase, and honestly, you should almost be able to 1v2 the enemy bot lane with your Q spam. If you're feeling really confident in your bullying abilities, you can even put in some extra points into Q, usually up to 3 for even better trading in the laning phase. If you prefer more aggressive support, then maybe Talia is a bit more your speed. This pick has been gaining a lot of traction lately, and for good reason. While enchanters are super strong at the moment, even the best laners, like the aforementioned Soraka, don't have a ton of all-in power. This makes it very difficult for them to punish squishy mage supports. This lack of threat makes it super easy for Talia to completely dominate the laning phase. Against foes that disrespect your burst, you can often get free kills once you get your full combo. And when opponents wisen up and respect what you're capable of, you can even help the ADC shove in the wave, then go for a quick roam, using Tilia's passive to glide around the map. The buffs for Sana got at 12 points, you have put her in a spot where, in my opinion, if you play her correctly, she's possibly the best ADC in the game. She's just super well-rounded, without having any glaring weaknesses or counter matchups to worry about. She has a ton of bursts early on, so you can definitely easily kill your lane opponents, even when paired with an enchanter. Her damage scales at all points of the game, with her late game being particularly strong due to her passive increasing her attack range to the point where she outranges even Caitlyn. The mobility of her W and her knockback of her ultimate also make her a safe, self-sufficient pick, so you don't really have to rely on random supports keeping you alive in teamfights. Vayne has been getting a little bit of the Kha'Zix treatment. Despite being an s performer in all situations, she's remained completely untouched for several patches now. A lot of Vayne's success comes from the Enchanter meta. Not only does she pair well with them, but laning against them also means that she has a pretty easy time laning. Even against the super high pressure enchanters, the worst case scenario is that you get poked out of lane a couple of times. But since they're never going to be able to force hard all-ins on you, you'll be able to lose gracefully. Then once you pick up some lifesteal, you'll be able to sustain any of the poke that you take as you farm up. Like Blitzcrank before, I don't really see Vayne going anywhere without either a significant meta swap, nor the champion being beaten to death with a nerf bat. Jinx makes a list for pretty much all the same reasons as Vayne. She's an insanely hard scaling champion, and due to the current meta, you just usually don't get punished too hard when you pick her. And Jinx is one of the champions that you really, really want to keep down. Her damage output at 3 items is higher than any other ADCs, able to melt through the entire enemy teams and they stack up for some fishbone splash damage. Finishing off our list, we have Auction. Pretty much since his release, Auction has been a terror in both solo lanes. He has all the best attributes that strong laners possess. A bursty trade from Brocking is passive allows you to chip away at your foe, while the movement speed that you get allows you to kite them or chase them down if you need. But he's not just limited to these hit and run attacks. Against squishy foes, just marking them with your passive, then swinging in with your E is often enough to 100 to 0 with him. Of course, a laning phase alone isn't enough to put Auction on this list. His true value comes later on into the game, where he has the damage to assassinate squishy, isolated opponents, as well as an insanely strong ability to revive teammates. And that wraps up things for our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 12.4. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you sub so you never miss out on our content like this. Remember to let us know what the most satisfying abilities and combos are down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box where you can go ahead and discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of the community. And if you guys want to catch me outside of Pro Guides, please follow me at twitch.tv slash Nathan underscore ING. I'll be streaming some League of Legends tonight, and I would love to see you guys there. Anyway, I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.